everybody, it's Dr. D. So I wanna talk about one of my favorite fractions activities. When I'm working with my students and we're talking about rational and rational numbers, I don't wanna just jump into it without making sure that my kiddos understand benchmark fractions. So this is a fun activity and you can differentiate it for all your students and all you really need is a few pieces of paper. Now I like to use colored papers because it helps my students see the different fractions here. And we start with a benchmark fraction of one half. Students fold the paper in half, and then they label one half as a fraction and as a decimal. They'll take their next piece of paper and they'll start folding it into fourths. Now, you can approach this many ways. And again, you know your learners. Now, if my students have limited knowledge, I might not wanna bounce right into division and say, hey, I have one for, I wanna fold my paper into fourths. I know my entire piece of paper is eight, eight and a half, 8.5. How do I figure out what one fourth is? You can have conversations with them about dividing your paper into fourths. Now, I can also just have them fold. I can have them do both. Folding the paper, folding in half, what would half of eight and a half be? What would be one fourth? And then again, opening the paper up and they can see it forth. Now, the fun thing is when they start labeling these papers, right? They're seeing one fourth. They're gonna start making connection between equivalent fractions. They'll see here that one fourth is also equivalent to two eighths. Notice that the fourths and the eighths are exactly the same color because the magic happens when they start labeling the fourths. And what I have them do, it's very easy, is once they fold it into fourths, I want them to take one half of a fourth, right? Because a half of a fourth is an eighth. And the kids get to see that visually right, between, right before their eyes, okay? They don't have to fold it again. They just take one half of one fourth, and that's an eighth. And then we have some really great conversations about how much an eighth is, how two eighths is equal to one fourth, and we make those connections as well with a fifth. We start with one fifth, and they cut one fifth in half, and they'll see it's equal to two tenths. Again, recording your fraction as a decimal and as a percent for all of these benchmark fractions. We do this as well with thirds, and then we have our six. So this is a great way to review, and then of course, while we're doing some activities in our uh, middle school curriculum, they have this tool. They have this as a scaffold when we're playing games or we're working on problems or they're doing quizzes. They can just re reference their fraction slip chart and they can see. They can, of course, make some connections about whether or not it's a, fra a benchmark fraction and if they would then, if it's not, um, divide it by the numerator. Of course, if it is a benchmark fraction, we talk about how to write a fraction to 100 so that they can easily determine what that fraction is as a decimal and percent. So again, all you're gonna need here is some papers, folding your papers. You can have your students measure the paper with the ruler. For the thirds, for example, we had a great conversation about whether it would be better to, to divide the third um, using the inches or the centimeters. And then my student made that connection that, hey, if we measure this paper in centimeters, it's about 21 centimeters, actually, 21 and a half centimeters. If I divide that by three, that's about seven and, and then we divided 0.5 by three, which was a great conversation. And the kids got to see those connections here. Cutting it again into six. So just a great um, activity to help activate some prior knowledge on fractions, to have conversations about divisions, to make connections to equivalency, and getting your kids to start doing the math. So I'll see you next time and I hope you have fun with the fraction decimal percent flip chart.